morning, welcome to the forge. I'm gonna make a quick grappling hook today to try and retrieve something from the bottom of the river in front of my house. I lost my lawn chair and uh, I don't know exactly where it is. The water's quite deep and it's tea colored so I can't see down to find out where it is exactly. So I'm gonna start with 36 inches of quarter inch round. I'm gonna cut it in half and then I'm gonna take each half and bend it in exactly the middle point, 180 degrees back on itself. And that's what we're left with. Two pieces, uh, about eight, nine inches long. And then we're gonna put those together the same way you would put together a basket twist handle. Um, like so. Like so. We're gonna heat up one end to forge welding heat. We're gonna flux it and forge weld uh, approximately two inches of the end together. And then we're gonna draw um, a ring on the end for we tie a rope onto. And on this end, we're gonna cut, we're gonna cut the four ends free. This, this, can, this is just for convenience for holding it for the forge welding process. And then we're gonna bend, bend that into a four pronged hook that I can tie onto a piece of paracord and drop into the river and drag along the bottom. Hopefully gonna hook my lawn chair, which I lost in the fall last year during a windstorm. And uh, yeah, so that's it. So as you can see, these bends are convenient. You can hold it together in the tongs. It's quite firm, not going anywhere. We'll be able to get a good forge weld on it in no time. Use a little bit of flux. We've got the Iron Mountain variety here. Works pretty good. And uh, yeah. Dull orange heat here. Well, maybe a little better than dull orange. Enough to melt the flux, not enough to build a lot of scale, which will interfere with the weld. That's plenty of that. Back in the fire. Won't show you into the fire because my iPhone doesn't have a filter on it, but uh, basically we're looking for the metal to be hot enough that it basically blends in with the background of the fire. Uh, yellow heat, uh, not quite sparking yet, not necessary to get it that hot. And um, some light blows to get it started and uh, then we'll cinch up the well. It helps, it's on the floor, it helps to have some sort of a block to keep things contained. Um, I've actually got a swedge block on the stand behind the camera but so that you guys can see what's going on I'm going to use this little block. One thing I notice, and I don't recall if it's the same with borax, but at least with the Iron Mountain, the flame in the fire actually changes to a dark orange um, right at the time you're ready to forge well. And um, again, I don't know if that's particular to this flux or if, if borax does that. I'd have to do an experiment, but uh, interesting to note. Some people look for the little sparks to start showing up in the flame. Um, to me, that's a little bit too hot. Um, I like it a little bit cooler than that. The other telltale sign that you're ready to forge weld is that everything gets wet. Um, you can see the flux running, some little bubbles and stuff forming on the surface of the material. If you've got two separate pieces, you can touch them together in the fire. You feel them, they get sticky. Um, if they'll stick in the fire, they'll stick on the anvil. You can really hear it when the forge well is happening the hammer blow becomes a real dull thud um, everything is compacting together the energy of the blow is absorbed into your workpiece it's not being rebounded back from the anvil it's like a dead blow mallet almost once you're familiar with that feeling ooh, sparks are hot though
I was saying, once you're familiar with the feeling of the material, when it's forge welded, you'll know you've got a good weld just from the first hammer blow. You'll know that you were at the right temperature and that you're getting that weld to happen. It's like a dead blow mallet. It's just a dull thud. Um, no ring. No rebound. So the next few heats should be done at the same forge welding temperature. Otherwise, you run the risk of breaking your weld. So we've just laid over the half face blow here. We've laid over enough material. To turn it around on itself and create a little ring that we can tie a rope to. Nothing fancy. Again, this is just a tool to be used today. Um, it's not something for a customer. Otherwise we'd pretty it up a little bit. Lay that over at about a 45. And then uh, get that hot again. So there's our end forge welded with an eye where we can tie a small line onto it. We're gonna turn it around in the fire now and we're just gonna cut the end off. being careful not to drive the hot cut into the animal. 
so we just sever it 99% of the way there and then twist them off We'll get that hot again. Right, I couldn't help myself. I cleaned it up on the grinder a little bit. Sharp edges were not sitting right with me. Even though it's a throwaway tool, I'm probably only going to use it once. We might as well do it right. So I guess the, the biggest takeaway, and I hadn't thought about it when I started this video, but the biggest takeaway from this for me is how convenient it is to forge weld. You know, I've got a TIG welder and a MIG welder and an ARC welder here in the shop. Um, but because I live off grid, I've got to start a generator. Um, and then I've got to set this up on the workbench and weld it together. And, uh, yeah, why bother forge weld it guys? It is again, not perfect, but I'm sure plenty strong, as strong as the parent bar. Again, my intention is that if I get snagged on something immovable, I can pull hard on this and it'll just straighten out one of the hooks. Um, I don't want to lose it at the bottom of the river. Um, so yeah, this should just uh, hopefully hook into the lawn chair, which is down deep there somewhere. And uh, yeah, forge welding. For a while there, I didn't know how to forge weld. And I'll tell you, now that I know how to forge weld, um, I find more and more reasons to forge weld versus uh, electric or even gas weld um, any of my work pieces together um, aside from the fact that it's super convenient um, it's also super traditional and it's how it would have been done in the past and uh, the results speak for themselves I guess thanks for watching guys wish me luck guys I'm going fishing <laughs>